Okay, while you get situated, I'm going to start one. I've started one of coffees already. We're going to be trying three different coffees today. The fourth one is what you get over there. So I promised you four, but we'll do three to be able to tell the difference between a blend and a single origin. So I've got three different single origins, I'll talk a little bit about it, and then you walk around the table and taste. So the object of this is basically to uh, be able to tell the difference between one coffee and the next more than just sniffing something and saying, oh, it smells like coffee. <laughs> if by the end of this hour you can you can say that yes, you know, it's more than just coffee, then it happens. So um, I'll just get started in a second, but it's going to take about four minutes to do this. So uh, by the time I run through the slides, we'll be done with coffee. Alright, so there are different types of roasting. Uh, you can roast it dark like this, 
a slightly lighter or medium, depending on what mood you're in. Good. Starbucks does it this way, uh, which I don't particularly like. I'll probably explain that later if somebody's interested in free. <coughs> Alright, this is all you really need to know about a coffee event. So if you look at these two lines, uh, the, the two tropics, between these two is the Bible belt, uh, the coffee belt. And all of the coffee grows here because of the temperature and the climate conditions of the So uh, some of the nicest coffee comes from Central America and uh, Africa. This is my favorite, the Ohio, we have one of those. Uh, we have one from Costa Rica today, which we're going to be trying. And we have another one from Sumatra. Right, so each part of the world has different climatic conditions, different soils, different growing processes, different processing methods, and so on and so on and so on. Has anybody done wine tasting before? You have? Anybody is familiar? Okay, good. So I can buy and go over the So what we want to try and do is be able to tell the taste of it between all three. When you're really, really good at this, uh, if you're one of the really good coffee tasters, you're still not at the level of the sommelier because uh, the amount of variety that you get with wine is a lot more than that. But there is a commonality between wine and coffee as well, in that there is a process and the soil conditions affect how it tastes. So, long story short, you can actually taste the country where it came from, effectively. So, we'll, I'll show you how to do that later on. <coughs> Does anybody know what that is? Do what? Well done. I don't know really. <laughs> okay, silicat is the only other processing method that isn't traditional. That came about fairly recently, I think. And you all know how that happens? No. Basically, the civet cat, which is not really a cat, um, eats only very picky. This guy is like probably the most snobbish coffee maker on the planet. He picks only the berries that are the best, and the, the, these berries that he picks goes through his digestive system, comes out the other end, and they're collected <laughs> traditionally off the forest floor, but in captivity, you know. This, there's no rocket science to it, you just pick it up and roast it. So it's cleaned and processed. <laughs> and then roast it. So what you're finally drinking is uh, after the cleaning, drying, and roasting. Right? So there's that whole process In Indonesia, they make it slightly differently. The roasting process is a uh, little bit low tech. So what they do is they add oil to the pan while they're frying it. So if anybody's been to Bali, definitely stop at one of those coffee estates and get him to show you how he does it. The smell is amazing. It's up in the hills and it's brilliant. Um, but the oil that they use for the roasting process also shows up in the coffee. So anybody heard of um, Old Town White Coffee? Mm -hmm. The reason why it's called white coffee is because in this Old Town, they used to use margarine to roast the coffee. And the margarine, when it after it dries, it basically makes the bean look white. Hence, white coffee. <laughs> One other thing that's added to coffee, again, this is specific to me because I'm Indian, okay. and this is how we do it in India. It's very, uh, I'd be doing a disservice if I didn't tell you about this thing. This is added to coffee in India. It's about 30% or 20% of this is added to the coffee, and uh, Indians who drink coffee are drinking 30% of this. You want to guess what it is? Without even knowing what it is. Without even knowing what it is. In any mix thing. This thing, yes, this thing. It's sometimes used in cooking food as well. Never heard of it, eh? It's also known as on the use, I think. English word. It's a root, it's a bit like uh, your white carrot. Grows on the ground, pull it out, they cut it up into tiny little pieces and roast it, and when they roast it, it comes out looking like what you saw before. This one. So, is it the taste or is it just like the It really brings out the flavor of coffee. So, it's, it's got. Um, Do we have it now? Chicory, no, but I can bring it in later. Damn. You'll have it tomorrow. 
because you know that's what I think they do. So swing by, I'll show you, and then I'll give you a thing. Anybody want to guess what this is? I love this. Honeycomb. Anybody else? Coral. Nope. Sponge. Sponge. Oh, and syrup. Is it like really Yes. Sugar. Nope. Sand. What, what are we doing? Please, context, look around. Oh, yes, thank you. Yay. Yay. <laughs> it's amazing, right? It's so it comes from this <laughs> machine. And it's made using this process. Very <laughs> simple. And uh, what effectively you need to look at is this thing in the middle. Because this is what produces it. Anybody figured out what we're talking about yet? Yeah. <laughs> sand, sand, do you see sand? Are the granules? The GD granules? The coffee granules? No, nothing else. Okay. Uh, That's is how you get instant coffee. Oh. So what you're drinking is basically chemically processed, pre-brewed, sprayed into a tank, coffee that's already been made for some machine to consume. What we made here just now and what we're going to be trying, no chemicals, straight from the bean. Okay, the, only thing the, out, the only thing that you missed out was the grinding process. So the beans, when it came out from the roaster, I bought beans yesterday, when I got the beans, I got them to grind it because we don't have to grind it. But if you stand next to the grinder, it's fine. <laughs> but anyway, the point I'm trying to make is that this is not coffee. So if somebody wakes up in the morning and says, Yes, I want my coffee, I can't taste without it, <laughs> they're lying to themselves and you have been The only thing it is good for though, and I will get drunk let's say this, is that it smells a lot like coffee. So it is aromatherapy, doesn't it? This on the other hand, it's not. Like, so it's a lot sexier than yeah. Don't do me then. Yeah, I mean, it's a sauce from three or something. Sexy thing. 